compute the directional derivative for the function at the given point in the direction of the given vector. So to get us started, let's simply recall how do we compute the directional derivative? Well, we know the directional derivative is defined as capital D sub vector u for that unit vector of the function f at a point a, b. So this is the directional derivative in R2. And we know that this is defined as the dot product of the gradient vector at the point a, b. And this is dotted with the unit vector, vector u. So, this is what we need to find the directional derivative for our given function. So to get us started, we need the gradient vector. So we want to find the gradient of this given function f at the ordered pair 1, negative 3. So we are given this function f of x, y, which is defined as the natural logarithm of 3 plus x squared plus 2y squared. So that's what we use to find the partial derivatives. So if the partial derivative of the function with respect to x, so since we are differentiating with respect to x, we treat y like a constant. So we are left here with 2x all divided by 3 plus x squared plus 2y squared. Now, very similarly, we need to go ahead and find the partial derivative of this function with respect to y. And now, as always, we'll keep in mind, since we're differentiating with respect to y, we treat x like a constant. So here we are left with 4y, and this is all divided by 3 plus x squared plus 2y squared. So we have the partial derivatives, and now we want to go ahead and evaluate each of these at, their, at the given point. So we have the partial derivative of this function with respect to x at the ordered pair 1, negative 3. And plugging this into the partial above, we have 2 multiplied by 1, all divided by 3, plus 1 squared, plus 2 multiplied by a negative 3 squared, and so, of course, we can simplify. We know 1 squared is just 1, minus 3 squared is 9. So we have 2 all divided by 3 plus 1 plus 18. So we have 2 divided by 22, which simplifies to 1 eleventh. And now we want to do the same thing with the partial derivative with respect to y. So the partial derivative of the function with respect to y evaluated at the point 1, negative 3. So we have 4 multiplied by negative 3. And now what's nice here, looking, at, looking above at our partial derivative, we see that they have the same denominator. Woohoo! So we already know what the denominator is. And now just be careful when you're looking at the denominator, look at the unsimplified denominator. So this is... 4 times negative 3 divided by 22, which is negative 12 over 22. And they're both divisible by 2, so we are left with negative 6 elevenths. So we have the components of our gradient vector. And we can say that, therefore, the gradient of this function at the ordered pair 1, negative 3, is the vector 1 over 11 minus 6 over 11. And notice we have a scalar multiple. So we could even factor that 1 11th out to the front. This is optional. You don't have to do this. But it can make the computation a little bit easier later on. And so there we have it. Here is the gradient of this function at the point 1, negative 3. So the first part is all set. Now, I want you to exercise caution with this next part. We should never, ever, ever assume that the vector we have been given is a unit vector. So in other words, we always want to check that vector u. 
Do we want to always check that the magnitude of your given vector is equal to one? So with that being said, let's check. So let's keep in mind, we're looking for the directional derivative of the function at the point one, negative three in the direction of the vector three, three. Now here we have a scalar multiple of three. So this is three multiplied by the vector one, one, which isn't really looking good. Let's call this vector, we'll call this vector V. Now let's check its magnitude. Now by the length of a scalar multiple property, we can keep that scalar multiple three out in front. And then we take, or we find the length of the vector using our distance formula. So we have one squared plus one squared, which leaves us with three times the square root of two, well, this certainly doesn't equal one. So this given vector is not a unit vector. So we can't use it. So what do we do? Well, we need to find a unit vector pointing in the direction of vector V, the given vector. So we want to find a unit vector pointing in the direction of the vector three, three. Now, how can we do this? Well, fortunately, we have a formula for this. If we think way back to the beginning of the course, we know that a unit vector pointing in the direction of a known vector is defined, say, as vector u being equal to vector v over the magnitude of vector v. And this implies, or this tells us that the magnitude of this vector u is one. So it's exactly what we need. So let's go ahead and find this unit vector. So here we go. We again are letting vector u be defined as the given vector v all over the magnitude of that given vector v. So our given vector here is three, three, and let's actually use our scalar multiple version. So we have the scalar multiple three multiplied by the vector with the components one, one. And this is all divided by its magnitude, which we found above. We know that's three times the square root of two. And look at this, those threes cancel each other right out. And so a unit vector pointing in the direction of vector V is one by the square root of two multiplied by the vector with the components one, one. So this is the vector that we want to use when we compute the directional derivative. So here we go, we have everything that we need. We have the gradient vector and now we have a unit vector. So let's compute the directional derivative And I'll abbreviate directional derivative. So we have capital vector or capital D sub vector U of the function F at the ordered pair one negative three. And we know that this is going to be the dot product of the gradient vector, which we found to be one by 11 multiplied by the vector with the components one, negative six, and we are dotting this with the unit vector in the direction of V. So that's one by the square root of two, multiplied by the vector with the components one, one. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit more room and we'll get right to our computation. Now, notice here, we've got two scalar multiples on both of our vectors. If you did not factor those scalar multiples out, you'll still get the same answer as long as your algebra is accurate and consistent. But what I'm going to do is pull those scalar multiples to the front. So we have 1 11th times 1 by the square root of 2, so that's just 1 over 2 times the square root. I got that backwards. It's 1 over 11 times the square root of 2. Right, that's the product of our two scalar multiples. And now we're just taking the dot product of these two vectors. 
So we have 1 by 11 times the square root of 2. And we'll have 1 times 1 is 1 plus negative 6 times 1 is minus 6. So this leaves us with a beautiful final answer of negative 5 divided by 11 times the square root of 2. And this is our final answer.